Hi friends, welcome to medical video lecture series in ophthalmology by All Urban Law Team. Today we are going to talk about the swollen eyes or the puffy eyes. This is a very common presentation to the A&Es or the emergency rooms and we are going to discuss the most common conditions which cause the swelling of the eyes, what to look for in the eyes to suggest the possible etiology and how to manage them. We do appreciate all the comments and you are most welcome to ask the questions on any of our presentations at any time. Solon eye or swelling of the eye can be due to any pathology within the lids that is the lid swelling can cause the swollen eye or sometimes if the problem is within the orbit that is say for example globe or in the periorbital tissue that can cause swelling as well. So when you look at the swelling of the eyes the most important thing is to look for is it the swelling of the lids or is it the swelling of the orbit or is it the swelling of both lids and the orbit. The most important thing, thing that should come to your mind when you look at a swelling of the eye is is it orbital cellulitis or vital cellulitis can lead to loss of vision within few hours if not treated. Apart from that, the other common causes include chalazion, sty, preceptal cellulitis, proptosis that is the protrusion of the eye, very common conjunctivitis which can be bacterial, viral or allergic can cause swollen eyes. And ophthalmitis due to any cause like surgery or post trauma can lead to swelling of the eyes. Any patient that presents with swollen lids, a detailed history is very important to ask how long the swelling has been, is it something which is acute onset or is it something which has been there for some time, is it progressing, is it going worse or is it stable, any problem with the vision, any double vision, any systemic complaints like fever needs to be asked. As I was telling, the most important thing to rule out in a patient who has got swollen eyes is to rule out orbital cellulitis. It is a vision threatening condition. It can lead to loss of vision within few hours to day if not treated. So what is orbital cellulitis? Orbital cellulitis is basically cellulitis of the orbital structures. It is acute in onset and it is very painful. The typical history would be a preceding history of any sinus infection or any infection around the eye which causes swelling of the eyes that is the lids become swollen and it's quite painful. The patient may notice decreased vision most commonly patients with orbital cellulitis will have temperature that is fever. When you examine there will be swelling of the lids that is lid edema, chemosis which is swelling of the conjunctiva, relative afferent pupillary defect can be there which suggest compromising optic nerve function, ocular movements can be restricted if there is involvement of the extraocular muscles which can cause diplopia. There can be proptosis if there is collection within the orbit causing the globe to move forwards. And again due to involvement of the optic nerve the color vision can be decreased. 
management of orbital cellulitis involves admission of the patient into the hospital and starting with intravenous antibiotics covering gram positive gram negative and anaerobes close monitoring for improvement is must we need to see the patients every 4 hours making sure that the patient is getting better if there is no improvement within one or two days of starting intravenous antibiotics we need to consider doing a ct scan of the orbit to look for any abscess as once there is an abscess it needs surgical drainage preceptal cellulitis the the lids are divided into preceptum and postseptum preceptum is the structures anterior to the septum that is tarsal plate subcutaneous tissue and the skin when the infection is in front of the tarsal plate then that is called as preceptal cellulitis in contrast to the orbital cellulitis the preceptal cellulitis is not as vision threatening as the orbital cellulitis so generally the vision will be normal the optic nerve functions will be normal the conjunctiva will be normal there won't be any proptosis there won't be systemic complaints so the pathology will be in the lids itself so when you see a swelling of the lids with no other involvement of structures then it is preceptal cellulitis again because it is cellulitis then the patient needs antibiotics but we can start off with the oral antibiotics and can monitor the patients the most common antibiotics that we use is coamoxiclav sometimes you may need metronidazole as well Another very common differential diagnosis in lid swellings is chalazion. It is a chronic inflammation of the meibomian gland which is a lipid secreting gland in the lid. When one of the ducts which open on the lid margin gets blocked the secretions built up within it and sometimes they get secondarily infected which can cause swelling pain and worsening of the swelling so when you examine there will be a localized swelling on the lid sometimes you can notice swelling in the surrounding area as well how do we treat it initial treatment involves warm compresses because by doing warm compresses we are trying to liquefy the lipids which are blocking the meibomian gland ducts and that may help to clear the secretions from the glands topical antibiotic steroid treatment helps the definitive treatment involves putting a nick on the inner side of the conjunctiva at the site of the swelling and draining the contents out which is called as incision and curatage sty can cause swelling of the lid chalazion is generally a chronic condition and generally it is painless unless it gets infected whereas sty is an acute condition it's it is basically an acute infection of the gland of zeis which are sweat glands so in a patient with sty you can notice an infection at the hair follicle whereas in chalazion the lashes are normal since it is an acute infection it involves warm compresses topical antibiotics and sometimes if there is a significant soft tissue around the lid then it may need oral antibiotics so for the conditions that we discussed all cause commonly unilateral swelling of the lids 
conjunctivitis is a very very common cause for the lid swelling conjunctivitis can be bacterial viral or allergic please go through the presentation on conjunctivitis that we have done before to understand in detail conjunctivitis always starts in one eye as redness and then it spreads to the other eye viral conjunctivitis can be self limiting when you examine a patient with conjunctivitis you can see the swelling of both the eyes that is the lids the conjunctiva will be red there will be a discharge in the eyes the cornea will be clear vision will be normal and the ocular movements will be normal how do we treat conjunctivitis if it is a viral conjunctivitis it can be self limiting and it improves on its own within a week they may just need topical lubricants if there is a bacterial conjunctivitis we need to give topical antibiotics and obviously if it's an allergic conjunctivitis which generally will have a long duration symptoms and history of itching will be very typical and they need anti allergic drops proptosis means protrusion of the eye again whenever there is a proptosis we need to always look for the reason for it most commonly the proptosis can be due to thyroid eye disease or else we need to look for any space occupying lesion within the orbit for the cause for the proptosis once there is a protrusion of the eye then there is a possibility that the lids may not be able to close the eye hence exposing the cornea which is called as exposure keratopathy similarly with progressive protrusion there can be compression of the optic nerve leading to blindness and loss of vision the treatment of proptosis involves treating the underlying cause and preventing complications like optic nerve compression or exposure keratopathy by relieving the pressure within the orbit by doing decompression and of thalmitis is a very very common cause for the lid swelling associated with blurring of vision and loss of vision in a post operative patient so in any patient who presents with lid swelling loss of vision and pain always ask for the history of any recent surgery if there is a recent surgery within a week or few weeks time always consider a possibility of end of thalmitis and refer to the ophthalmologist straight away because this is again something which can lead to loss of vision in few hours this will need urgent vitreous tap and sending it for examination followed by intravitreal antibiotics covering gram positive and gram negative organisms ocular trauma is again a very very important cause for swollen eyes sometimes we call it as black eyes the ocular trauma can lead to lid tear conjunctival tear or globe perforation or it can damage any of the ocular structures any patient who has got ocular trauma we need to refer to the ophthalmologist for complete evaluation of the globe to rule out any perforation of the globe and if there is an obvious lid tear with rest ocular examination being normal then this will need lid tear repair sometimes there can be a subconjunctival hemorrhage due to blunt ocular trauma or penetrating ocular trauma this generally subsides on its own in few weeks and generally does not need any treatment however ruling out other ocular pathologies is more very important so in summary in a, in any patient with swollen eyes always rule out orbital cellulitis 
and suspect endophthalmitis in any patient with a recent history of ocular surgery presenting with swollen eyes and painful loss of vision. I hope you liked the presentation. Do share, comment, subscribe. Thank you and best wishes from all in law team.